my notes aren't fully accurate, so that's why I'm confused here. I had these brilliant points to make, but, but my my notes are not accurate. They do not correspond as well. Ah, so uh, going back to Moses getting kicked out mm -hmm. uh, in the GTS translation, God says to Moses and Aaron, because he did not trust me enough to affirm my sanctity in the sight of the Israelite people. Therefore, you shall not lead this congregation into the land that I have given them. In the sight of the Israelite people, their sin was aggravated because it was witnessed by all of Israel. So, mm -hmm. to whom, to what may this be compared? To the case of a king who had a friend. Now, this friend displayed arrogance toward the king privately, using harsh words. The king, however, did not lose his temper with him. After a time, he rose and displayed his arrogance in the presence of his legions, and the king passed sentence of death upon him. So also the Holy One, blessed be he, said to Moses, The first offense you committed was a private matter between you and me. Now, however, that it is done in the presence of the public, it is impossible to overlook it. Yeah. So there's a big yeah. private-public right. distinction in Judaism that's much more clear and explicit than in Christianity, where mm -hmm. there's kind of, oh, you know, don't be a hypocrite, and you know, what you do privately, you might as well do publicly. But in Judaism, it, it's if you like privately break the Sabbath in your in your own apartment, it's still a sin, and it's still not good. But it's very different from driving with the top down, blaring loud rock music down Pico Boulevard at eleven o'clock Sabbath mornings. Right. You know that's like flipping a middle finger to the right. to the community and to God. And there's a kind of interesting statement being made here about PR mm -hmm. in many ways. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wonder. I just I wonder how one would um, apply that to the situation with Israel and world opinion. Right, it's yeah, like I guess that. we can't say, oh, who cares what the Graham think? Right. Because it seems right. like what people think is is a very right. big deal. Right. So even if, like, the flotilla was totally justified, the killing of those right. nine people on the flotilla, if it makes Israel look bad in front of the world, it's not a good thing. Right. However morally justified it was. Yeah. 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 I'd love to read that book of the wars of the Lord. You see that I, referred to, wouldn't that yeah, be cool? Yeah, fourteen. Yeah. yeah. At yeah. least I'd like to play the video game. <laughs> it's um, it reminds me of um, Jabez because um, Edmund Jabez, the Jewish Egyptian poet, has he has like the book of questions, the book mm -hmm. of you know all sorts of things. The book of the book of the wars of Yeti Lovey. It sounds like sounds like a good book. It does. And we don't have that book. Where is it? I know you're not into the sacrificial system, but you think you'd sin less if a cute little animal had to die every time you did? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Uh, that would probably, um, yeah, that would be a hiatus in my transgression, transgressing if I had to kill an animal every time. I'm sure you'd be happy to sacrifice Elliot for your sins. <laughs> I'm thinking also about the banish banishment of the... Is it Azal Azal or one of the goats on Yom Kippur? You send you right. kill one of the goats, I think, and yeah. then you send one out into the wilderness. Right. I'm thinking, isn't that what we do to many people in academia? Like if they we send them to Buffalo, the University of Buffalo is that's got like a great this, job. That's a dream job. It's got like one of the great Jewish studies departments they in do. the United States. They do. Richard Cohen just took it over. Yeah. But if like. I'm, I'm sure many academics are threatened, like, if you don't shape up, you know, the only job you're going to be able to get is in Buffalo. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good job. I would probably take a job at Buffalo. It's big theory. Have you ever lived studies. in a place that cold? 
I mean, I'm no, sure it's colder than Indiana. Indiana was cold, but I know Buffalo is just dreadful. Yeah. No, but... It's a good way, though, of getting rid of our more sinful scholars of Jewish studies. Yeah. Send them to Buffalo. They can't do much damage there. <laughs> right. They're too cold to be of much danger. How do you feel about genocide when God commands genocide? How do you feel about genocide? I rather like it. What am I supposed to say to that? Okay, what are you calling genocide? Let's, okay, let's oh, talk about that. Oh, what are you calling genocide? <laughs> what was the, um, who is it? Ellie, Ellie Valley just posted something on Facebook um, about Abraham Fox when it had been asked. Um, was it genocide? Something. Oh, something the like, Armenian genocide. Right, yeah, about yeah, the Armenian yeah. genocide. Yeah. He said something really stupid, like yeah, it was war. Things get messy. <laughs> but there is a difference between war, messiness, and genocide. Absolute, they're like, absolutely, absolutely. Like I, I think with gradations. the Armenians, it was a genocide. And then neither one of us are particular clear. scholars on the. No, manner. but everything I've read, I just got a big book in the mail a few months ago called The Armenian Genocide. And how many pages have you read? I've this read book? about. 20 oh, out okay. of that's 20, that's 20 pages more than I've that's read. That's right. So I'm genocide. the expert here. So you are the expert here. Armenian genocide. Um, you know, but I mean, people like to call the Palestinian situation, people like to refer to that as genocide. Right, right. And that's, it's really ludicrous. It, it may be something else, but it's not genocide. It's, I don't know. Um, so we're talking numbers 21, verse 24. Israel put them to, to the sword and took possession of their land. Uh, Israel took all their towns. Uh, then Israel occupied the land of the Amorites. They marked up to Bashan. The king Og of Bashan with all his people came out to engage him in battle. End of chapter 21. God said to Moses, Don't fear him. I'm going to give him and all these people and all his land into your hand. You shall do to him as you did to the to Sion, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon. They defeated him and his sons and all his people till no remnant was left. Seems like genocide to me. They took possession of his country. So, pretty, pretty hardcore. God commands the Israelites to commit genocide, and in this text, that they do commit genocide. Seems that way. So why do you think they didn't at least keep the hot women alive? I suspect they kept them alive long enough before they killed them. I, I suspect that that was happening. Um, yeah, and again, where's the where's the ritual purification? <laughs> I don't see it happening here. Well, I'm not sure they needed it because I was simp they weren't. It's not like they're it's like a skin skin you know, disease. This is just genocide. But they're exposed to death when you kill somebody. You've been exposed right, to a right, corpse. Right, right, right. Even when it's a non Jew. That's my understanding, yeah, right? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Too. It's just a corpse. It doesn't matter if it's a Jewish corpse. Well, so as long as they can then decontaminate, I think I'm okay with this. <laughs> right. As long as they did, yeah, as, long as long as they, they found the, the red cow, yeah, yeah. I'm fine with the yeah, genocide. I yeah. just need to know that they purified afterward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's I'm very fine. important after genocide. Right. So you purify. Otherwise, you can just take that contagion, like, with you. Right. And it just can, like, totally muck everything up. Right, right. And it's really important to decontaminate after you commit genocide. Right. Mm -hmm. So, do you think God was wrong? That's a loaded question. It's, I, I don't, it's, that's probably the wrong question. Um, I mean, why do they have to kill the little babies? Well, I, yeah, see, I don't, I don't think it's whether or not God is wrong. I think what's, what is this text trying to tell us? What can we take away from this text? How are we supposed to read it? Are we supposed to read it as... Um, Instruction for our lives today. <laughs> right. I mean, are we to wage war on all of the overweight people and take their land? I... It, 
probably not. Um, you know, so the question is, how are we supposed to 